Shalom. I want to give all praises and in glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Recha, Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahweh Shai is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahweh Shai. And uh, pretty much in this lesson, I'm going to show you why, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, why the Lord used Apostle Paul to go to the uncircumcised or the Israelites that was in a Gentile state of mind. All right. And the reason why the Lord used Apostle Paul as his vessel to preach the word is because through Apostle Paul, all right, it shows grace and mercy that we have through the blood and sacrifice of Yahweh Shai. Because when you come into this truth, you know, you have to put off the old man and renew your mind by the washing of this word to be able to offer up acceptable sacrifices unto Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, all right? Spiritual sacrifices, all right? So in this lesson, I'm going to show you how, you know, Apostle Paul's conversion, all right? Because he used to be known as Saul, and then when he got converted right as a new believer you know as a proselyte under Gamaliel he became a new man who we know as Apostle Paul and he was a great man of the Lord and yes Yahweh and Yahweh Shah was dealing with Apostle Paul and we should you know um teach his teachings because it's in the scriptures all right now this is the book of Galatians chapter 2 and verse 9 because a lot of Christians they don't have the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we have through the blood and sacrifice of Yahweh Shai, which also involves the gift of faith to be able to do what we're doing, doing live streams, doing lessons, going out on the highways and byways as commanded by Yahweh Shai himself. We're able to do these things through Yahweh Shai. All right. So um, this is Galatians 2 and 9. So the point that I'm getting at is all of Apostle Paul's epistles in the New Testament is written only for the Israelites. And I'm going to show you that. All right. Before you even get into the chapters, the first couple of verses, it always has key words such as church. When you go into the word church, it means an assembly of Israelites. All right. It has words like brethren, meaning that they're related to Apostle Paul. They're Israelites from one of the 12 tribes. All right. Mainly at that time, Judah, Benjamin and Levi. And then it also has the word saint or saints, which we know the saints are the Israelites. All right. So this is Galatians 2 and 9. It says, and when James and Cephas, Cephas is another name for um, Peter. Right. And John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me. Now, this is Apostle Paul talking. Right. It says. They gave to me and Barnabas because um, Barnabas, he was the companion of Paul. Just like today, you have a companion of multiple different prophets in different camps. All right. The same was going on back then. So it reads me and Barnabas. Right. Which let's go into um, Barnabas a little bit. See what it says about him. It says the surname of Joses or Joseph, a Levite, a native of Cyprus. He was a distinguished Christian teacher and companion and colleague of Paul. Just like how the prophets today have colleagues today. And we all have one mind, one body, and one spirit. And we teach the same exact doctrine, which is why we don't associate with other camps outside of Great Millstone. If they're not teaching what we're teaching, because that would be confusion. So it reads, Barnabas, the right hands, right? Meaning the authority of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision so christians will read this and automatically think wait a minute apostle paul's epistles this was only written to this was written for everybody you know grace and mercy applies to all nations the the death of yahweh Shai applies to everybody but that's not what it says in the scriptures all right now when you go into this word heathen the word there is ethnos and it says, right, the human family, referring to who? Israelites, a tribe, nation, people, group. So it's talking about a singular seed line, 
referring to who? The Israelites, right? It says, Paul uses the term for Gentile Christians. Who were the original Christians? Who, who were the original followers of the Messiah? Israelites, all right? So it says, unto the heathen. So the heathen that is talking about is Israelites that's in a Gentile state of mind. Because remember, the previous captivity, right? We was Hellenized by the Greeks. We was forced to keep Greek customs and pagan worship and follow the way of the Greeks. Because that was the goal of Alexander the Great and his four um, generals and the men under him. To Hellenize the whole known world during that time under Greek rule. All right? So that's what happened to Israel. So also, during the Roman Empire... Right, you had Israelites that was following the way of the Romans, right? So they was in a heathen mindset. So it says, and they unto the circumcision, referring to James, you know, um, Peter and John. The circumcision were Israelites that knew that they were Israelites and were actually circumcised as the law commands, right? And the uncircumcised were the Israelites that was in a Gentile state of mind, acting like heathen. Okay. So now, let's keep it going. So this is the book of um, 1 Timothy. Just want to make sure. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse... We're going to start at verse 12. 1 Timothy 1 and 12. It says, And I thank Hamashiach Yehawashah, our Lord, who have enabled me, for that he counted me faithful. Yes, the Lord calls us into the truth. Lord willing, we're chosen, right? It's not us that does the um, choosing or deciding to come into the um, truth. You know, we don't make our own choices. All of our actions is predestined by the Heavenly Father through his only begotten Son. Yahweh through Yahweh Shai, right? So the hope we have, which is in Yahweh Shai, we hope that we endure until the end and that we're a part of the elect. It says, putting me into the ministry, right? Who was before? Now, Apostle Paul is going into when he was the old man known as Saul. And he's explaining to you how Yahweh and Yahweh Shai is having mercy on him. Why? Because now he's a believer. Before, when he was Saul, as I'm going to show you, he was persecuting the church. All right. He was blaspheming. You know, he did all manner of wickedness, but he did that ignorantly in unbelief. So the Lord will abundantly pardon your sins if you put off the old man as an Israelite and you renew your mind by the washing of this own um, word. All right. Tuning into the live streams, you know, the, the lessons, you know, staying in the spirit, meditating on prophecy. Right. So First Timothy 1 and 13, it says, who was before a blasphemer. A blasphemer is somebody that speaks lies on the truth, right? So us brothers, before we came into the truth, right, we were blasphemers. You probably believed in bugged out philosophies, right? You probably had your own conclusion on what you thought the truth was before actually coming into the real truth, right? Having the knowledge of the scriptures through Yahweh Shai, right? It says, and a persecutor. Paul was persecuting the Israelites, all right, the believers. He was persecuting the elect. That's 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 you know that's that's a heinous thing to do, but he was forgiven through the blood and sacrifice of Yahweh, which represents what? Grace and mercy. Which is why Yahweh and Yahweh used Apostle Paul to go to the Israelites that was in the Gentile state of mind. Because the Lord was gonna have mercy upon the Israelites that was in a Gentile state of mind, regardless of the sins that they commit. As long as they believe on Yahweh Shai, right? So it says, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, right? We're going to go into this word, um, injurious. Strong's G, 5197. Hubri stays. Hubri stays. Let's see what that says. Yep. An insolent man. One who uplifted with pride either heaps insulting language upon others or does them some shameful act of wrong. So Paul was, like, before he was known as Apostle Paul, when he was the old man, right, known as Saul, you know, he, he was just doing crazy things, all right? But anyways, it says, but 
I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And you can apply that to brothers' walks before coming into the truth. You probably was a gangbanger. You probably was the worst type of individual. You know, just, just talking loosely. You know, just tempting the Lord in your actions. But you did that ignorantly in unbelief. So once you start to believe on Yahweh Shai, you know, you'll be forgiven. Now, I'm going to focus on Paul known as Saul, right? Being a blasphemer, persecutor, and injurious. Let's get some scriptures, and then I'm going to jump back. So this is dealing with the account of Stephen, right? Which is a man of the um, Lord, you know, one of the elect. He was put to death by um, Saul. So let's read about it. So this is the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 54, and I'm going to read some of Acts 8. It says, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of the Most High and Yahweh standing on the right hand of the Most High, and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of the Most High. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon them with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witness laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. So before he converted, right, and started believing on Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, right, he was known as Saul before he was known as Paul. So this is Paul as the old man doing things ignorantly and unbelief. And you can equate that to your walk, right? Or you can equate that to Israelites before they come into the truth. They do things ignorantly and unbelief, which is why Yahweh Shai, along with Stephen, you know, which I'm getting ready to read, you know, he said, um, lay not this charge unto them because you had some of them that was the elect, right? So this is Acts 7 and 58, and cast him out of the city and stone him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, called upon the Most High, and saying, Lord, Yahweh Shai, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge, because some of them was a part of the elect, right? It says, and when he had said this, he fell asleep, meaning he died, right? Acts chapter 8 verse 1 This is dealing with what? Saul persecutes the church This is why when you read of 1 Timothy 1 and 13 Right? Apostle Paul He's telling you how he did things Ignorantly and unbelief He's showing you how he obtained Grace and mercy through Yahweh Shai Because the acts that he did Of course he should be put to death Alright? But you being an Israelite, this is why Yahweh Shah died for us in the first place, to give us another chance through his blood and sacrifice. When you read Acts chapter 5 and verse 31, the Lord's blood and sacrifice only pertains to Israelites that believe, Israelites that repent, that come back sorrowful to Yahweh through Yahweh Shah and worships them both. All right. So like I said, it says, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious but I obtained mercy. So now you're starting to see why Yahweh Shai came to Apostle Paul, right? And why um, the Lord used Apostle Paul to teach the Israelites that was in a Gentile state of mind. It's all about showing you the grace and mercy of Yahweh Shai through his blood and sacrifice, as long as you believe on him, right? So this is Acts chapter 8, verse 1. Saul persecutes the church, right? And Saul was consenting unto his death, unto Stephen's death, right? And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church. The church talk about the Israelites. It says, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout, throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. Meaning, you know, they was crying. It says... As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. So this is um, Paul, right? Before he was known as Paul, he was known as Saul. And these are acts that he was doing that was wicked, all right? But he did it as the old man. He did it ignorantly and unbelief. 
So now let's read some more. So now this is the book of Acts chapter 9 and verse 1, right? The conversion of Saul, right? And now this is when he's known as Apostle Paul. He's the new man. Now he has the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding through Yahweh, right? So this is Acts chapter 9 and verse 1 on down. It says, And Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And he... And as he journeyed, came near Damascus, right? Where's Damascus at? It's in Syria, as you can see here, right? Leading up into Turkey as well. See? This is where he was at. So reading on, it says, And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why, per why persecutest thou me? This is Yahweh talking to Apostle Paul, but he was known as Saul. The Lord is saying, why are you persecuting me? Meaning, why are you persecuting my men? You know, why are you putting them to death? Why are you throwing them in prison? Why are you coming against me? Because they're coming against a prophet and a true believer that believes on Yahweh and Yahweh the doctrine of the gospel. You know, you're coming after Yahweh Shai. You're persecuting Yahweh Shai, right? It says, And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Yahweh Shai, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks, which is a proverb, right? Because when you go into the word pricks, this is what it's talking about. It says, Hence the proverb, to kick against the, the gourd, i.e. to offer vain and perilous or ruinous resistance. Right. So it says, and he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journey with them stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth. And when his eyes were open, he saw no man, but they laid him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Yeah, because, you know, he was um, blind for three days. So they had to um, hold on to him and got him to Damascus, right? It says, And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said the Lord in the vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. And he hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he have authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. Right? And what's the name of the Lord? Yahawashai. Not Jesus, not any other name. It's just Yahawashai. Right? Yahawashai. Yahawashai. Right? It says, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel. So even though Saul did all that in his ignorance, which can be applied to the Israelites that was in the Gentile state of mind. All right. You know, the Israelites that was looked at as heathen, that was uncircumcised. Right. If they are part of the elect and they chosen vessel um, vessels of the Lord, you can't condemn them because they are part of the elect. So you're going to have some of the elect that do things in ignorance before coming into the truth. But now when you come into the truth, all right, you got to put off the old man. You got to stop doing the ignorant things that you was once doing. Because if you keep going down that path, you know, you're going to be destroyed. Eventually, you're just going to go back into the world. Right. So this is heavy. It says Acts 9 and 15. But the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel. This man was persecuting the church. You know, he was persecuting the elect. But the Lord said he's a chosen vessel. You can't go against the Lord's authority. You can't go against the commandments of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. You got to do what he said, right?
can't caution it. We all need grace and mercy. We all are sinners called into repentance. All right. And that's what Apostle Paul represented. That's why um, John, James and Peter sent Apostle Paul to the uncircumcision. OK, so it says he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles. Right. What Gentiles is it talking about? The word ethnos again is talking about Israelites. Israelites that was in a Gentile state of mind from the previous captivity and the current captivity, right? Following the way of the heathen, on um, the heathen, following the way of these Edomites, right? This pagan worship, pagan customs, so forth and so on, breaking the law, statutes, and commandments, right? It says, and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hand, his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Yehoshai, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. All right. So the Lord had mercy on Apostle Paul, even though he did evil acts, ignorantly in unbelief. So 1 Timothy 1 and 13. So apply that to yourself. Think about that. Think about how rich and great the Lord's um, mercy is. This is why Yahweh Shai is ought to be worshipped. All right. Yahweh commanded Israel to worship Yahweh Shai. When you read um, Matthew, the 17th chapter. So it says 1 Timothy 1 and 13. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy. That's what it's all about. The Israelites that's a part of the elect of the nation of Israel, right? We have mercy through the blood and sacrifice of Yahweh Shai. But ultimately, all Israel is going to be saved in the kingdom. That's through Yahweh Shai. All right? He took on all of our sins. So it says, because I did it, ignorant and unbelief. It says, and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. So it says... This is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception that Hamashiach Kehavoshai came into the world to save sinners. Now, who, who are sinners? What is sin? Sin is transgression against the law. So sinners is plural. Who was given the law, statutes, and commandments? The Israelites. All right? So the sinners that the Lord came and died for is who? The Israelites. Right? He came to redeem them that was under the law, beginning with the elect. It says, of whom I am chief. So Apostle Paul is saying, I'm, I'm chief. I'm a sinner. I did all these wicked things, but I obtained mercy and grace through Yahweh Right? So even in this walk, you know, you're going to have times when you fall, but you got to get back up. You got to pray to Yahweh and Yahweh All right? Establish your own relationship between you, all right, and Yahweh and Yahweh Shai through the Holy Spirit when you pray. And, and pray in faith Don't pray wavering and doubting Right So it says how be it for this cause I obtain mercy that in me First Yehoshua Hamashiach might show Forth all long suffering For a pattern to them Right the uncircumcised Right or the uncircumcision The Israelites that was in the Gentile state of mind It's spiritual Alright that the Lord sent Apostle Paul Unto the Israelites that was in the Gentile state of mind so it says, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. All right. So, you know, that's that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Lord willing, you was edified by the lesson. 